From the Intellifluence headquarters in sunny Scottsdale, Arizona, this is the Intellifluence Influencer Spotlight. In each episode, we sit down with an influencer from our network and we discuss their background as well as their unique approach to influencer marketing. Allison Gappa is a sports reporter, sideline reporter, entertainment host, and influencer on Intellifluence. Allison is the pregame host of OSU Football's Coach's Cabana and the host of Tulsa Custom Homes, in addition to being a freelance sideline reporter for Fox Sports Southwest. You can watch Allison's Reel at allisongappa.com or visit her blog at aoksocial.com for content focused on home design, fashion trends, and health tips, to name a few. Can you tell us what led you to get into fashion blogging and influencer marketing? Yeah, well, I was in sports broadcasting for years. I mean, over 10 years and still uh, freelance and I host a home design TV show now. And so I've been in broadcasting, but fashion's always been kind of a huge part of television, a huge part of my life. Uh, I've always loved it. My mom's always loved it. And so um, starting influencer marketing was kind of a way for me to be able to express that kind of fashion side. Um, especially because in sports and in TV, you're in such a male dominated industry. And so um, that was kind of my way, I guess, of expressing myself and and, and that certain passion that I had. Nice. And then as a sports reporter, entertainment host, blogger and influencer, you have all these going on. So how do you structure your average day? So everything gets done and needs to get done and you stay sane and... (laughs) Well, they're all different. That's the thing. My day, my days are all different. So one day Ali will be out filming the TV show and I'll be on set and I'll be in full hair and makeup. And then, you know, one day I'll be in my sweats writing like five different blog posts for my website and from the TV show's website. And then I'm also a producer on the show. So I do a lot of producing and stuff like that. And so, um, and then one day I might do a ton of batch content for influencing and the next day I might, you know, write those things. And then the next day I'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot to water my plants for the 10th day in a row. So, and it's stinking hot here in summer. So no, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, so every single day is different, which I kind of love because I'm not, you um, a, a person that w- would be okay with ev- I like my office changing every day I guess <laughs> so but yeah well and you mentioned that like you got into influencer marketing to share your passion for fashion so what are some of your favorite brand partnerships to date um I recently worked with Cure Therapy out of Miami and I love Miami it's one of my favorite places to go so I was excited just the fact that they're from there um but it's a hair care collection and they have they do uh keratin infused all their products are and it was just like I love whenever you're able to form like really good relationships with the brands And I just loved working with them. And I mean, they posted my blog on their website and all their products were amazing. And so that was actually my most recent one. Um, And then I love like my long-term brand partnerships too. Um, Flying Colors Apparel is one that they um, sponsored me doing a lot of like game day stuff, but they also have a boutique side. So they're able to kind of help out that way. And then kind of something different, um, which is also really cool, is I collaborated with a local, um, I, don't, I guess you'll call her a fashion designer, but essentially what we did is we collaborated on um, taking different pieces and her totally remaking them. So I kind of designed them and then she like, you know, would like cut up denim jeans and bleach them and throw like staples all over. And there was just like gorgeous. It looks like something you'd see on Justin Bieber and stuff like that. So, you know, I always joke with her that one day we're going to have an AOK line or something like that because um, my blog's AOK social. So, um, yeah, so I joke with her that, you know, one day we'll, we'll go all out and do it. But she's amazing. And, and, and it's exactly what I see in my head happens, which is crazy. And it's even better than than what I imagined. So those clubs are cool too, kind of like using artists and yeah, just kind of shut off them. 
Very nice, very nice. And passion for fashion. Oh, that was good. Did you work yeah. that out beforehand or? Nope. No, just, just <laughs> came, right off the top. Came to me. All right. And so on the flip <laughs> side of that, my favorite question to ask is, uh, so what are the weirdest requests you've received from brands? Now these might be like brands that obviously haven't read your bio and they're pitching you something completely just off the wall. Have you received anything yeah. like that? It was funny because actually this morning I got an email from a fast food company and they're bringing back a item that used to be popular and they asked if they could come and cater an event for me with this just this specific new item which is like kind of a cool idea but it's also like if i told you the place and told you what the item was it would like make the story even more kind of bizarre but i was like what am i supposed to do with this i was like thinking about it i was like well maybe you know like i could have them show up on like a, a shoot day or sorry, I try not to say shooting, but film day, uh, just because of, yeah, but in TV, everyone still says shoot days. Um, but I try, I was like, are all the guys gonna like it? Are they gonna be like, oh yay, she brought the this random weird item, not weird, but this random item catered, or are they all gonna look at me like, what are you doing, Allison? Like, what's happening right now? So I'm in my head, I'm kind of brainstorming because I try and stay open-minded. I'm not really one of those people that are like, oh, you know, I have this category and I just work with these brands and I turn down so many people. And not that I don't turn down people, but sometimes there's products out there that I didn't even know existed. And I'm actually like, what is this? Like, I do want to try this. Like, this is so random, but like there's this blow dryer that's like a reverse blow dryer. And it's kind of like a vacuum. So you put the, it's, it's literally looks like a vacuum. You put the, with wet hair inside of this tube and it sucks up your hair and blow dries it and then straightens it all the way down. And like, had I not said yes to that, I wouldn't have ever seen, you know, known how cool it was, but does it sound bizarre coming in? Probably. So, I mean, I'm just kind of one of those people that um, probably go for a lot of things and say a lot more yeses than nos. That reminds me of the, uh, the Floby, the, the thing you hook to the vacuum cleaner that cuts your hair. I mean, it's kind of what it looks, it's scary because like you think it's going to like suck up your hair or tangle it or like, but it just like, it dries it and straightens it and it happens so fast. It's the craziest thing. And oh it's God, it looks like a vacuum cleaner, right? <laughs> it's called Rev Air. All right. Are you going to get into the hair. office earlier then? Right. Oh, shut I didn't even do my hair today. <laughs> well, it really does. It really does work because I... I had some friends over, I was like, do you guys think this? And they're like, yeah, that's crazy. And it takes, cause I mean, you put, I mean, essentially this much of your hair in at, a at a time. And so you do that, you know, once or twice and you're done in half the time it would take you to blow dry your hair. And she knows how long it takes to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guys, that type of stuff. So okay, so do you blow dry your hair though? No, no, no. <laughs> He's married to a hairdresser though, so you oh, should know. Okay, so you get it. It's but it's like the shoemaker's kid has no shoes. I'm still waiting for my haircut and it always becomes hat day towards the end of the month. <laughs> yeah. No, actually I had a girl I work with the organic spray tanning company here, which is awesome because it's like the only organic place in Tulsa and who even know, knew there was organic spray tanning, right? So, and she was, she said the same thing. She was like, you know, hairstylists and even with like people that are spraying, like we never have our own time to like do it ourselves, you know? <laughs> like we're always doing each other people, but we're like over here, like looking pasty and stuff like it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, can you offer some advice to influencers who might be uncomfortable like myself in front of the camera? <laughs> Um, so what are some things you've learned along the way within your broadcasting career? Yeah, well, I don't think that you come off uncomfortable. So rule number one, don't say you feel uncomfortable. No, I'm just kidding. I messed the whole thing up. <laughs> my mom, my mom, one time I said, I was like, mom, I was really awkward. She's like, don't be saying that. You can't say that. So now I don't say I'm awkward anymore. So that was my mom. That was my mom, uh, advice to you for the day. <laughs> I love it. Tell her thank you. I have a mom blog or that I am a mom. But tons of reps. I mean, if you want to be the starting quarterback, you want to get the most reps, right? And so it's just over and over and over and over again. And 
you know, starting out, you can have natural talent, but nobody's going to be amazing starting out. It's a craft that you have to hone just like anything else. It's um, a process. It's a lot of hard work. It's hustle. It's, you know, I'm a big believer in God. I think that that was my weird thing that I was supposed to do because I was just kind of like good at everything else. And then this really worked for me. I was like, oh, I'm actually going to be like really good at something instead of just like, okay, good at something. So, um, and then like tons of mentors, but I mean, there's the, the biggest thing I would say is getting reps. And I had a mentor tell me one time too, I was hosting a 30 minute live TV show that had a live audience. I was young. It was ad lib. I didn't have a teleprompter. And he was like, go to the bathroom, practice that show in the mirror, look in the mirror and do it. Because sometimes you don't realize it, but you have these weird things that you do. You can you can say it and talk it, but you don't realize what you're doing until you watch yourself in the mirror. I used to do something that I call swimming and I'd like duck my head kind of back and forth like that. And I would have, you know, never known had I not practiced and the mirror so yeah i think i was literally doing that up until the point you said that i was i think i was oh yeah 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 no the nodding is a really hard one to cut to i would notice that in my interviews because you so it's like it's just a conversation thing especially when you're on camera because you want to acknowledge the other person that you're listening and so you nod a lot but then you watch yourself back and you're like, my head didn't stop moving. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, why was I picking my nose? What? So, there's a lot of worse things that have happened on live TV. Don't worry. True, true, true. Um, I was gonna say some of that advice reminded me of my public speaking class where my teacher was like, oh yeah, look in the mirror. And I'm like, oh my God, I hate myself. And then she had us and then she had people film you and you had to look at the video and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, it's the hardest, especially watching those first couple videos. I mean, sometimes I would even put it away for a day if I couldn't watch it yet and then watch it the next day. <laughs> Just because it, it is hard getting used to seeing yourself, hearing your voice on camera. It's all, it's different. So, I mean, I think that's pretty normal. Where do you see influencer marketing in the next five years or so? Specifically, how will video evolve? I kind of think it's a lot like TV in the fact that, I mean, nobody really knows where it's going just because things are changing and happening so fast. I mean, in the television industry, we've seen networks kind of go back and forth between figuring out if they want to do this mix of streaming and how much money they want to put into streaming and if it's actually going to work and how they're actually going to sell ads and stuff like that. And so I think that there's a lot of supply, obviously, of influencers and there's a lot of demand for influencers. So it's by no means going away, but it is not going to look anything like it looks now in five years. And video content wise, I think that Gen Z, the generation below millennials, I think they will have the biggest impact on it. Because I think how they consume video is very different than even how millennials and the other generations consume it. So I think that we'll see a blow up and kind of like a saturation of like any type of video that you could ever possibly want. Like you would, have behind the scenes, you would have how to's, you would have really high quality videos and like hype videos, but you'd also have really kind of raw videos and your unboxing videos. And then you would have all these other type of videos that don't, you know, that continue to happen and that either continues to happen and, you know, different types of videos continue to trend or, you know, like a TV show did for the longest time one video kind of takes rule or precedence or we see something like Facebook is just everything's video. I mean, think about it. Your comments could be video. Your statuses could be video. Everything could turn to be video. I mean, it could get to that point. So, I mean, like you don't, you don't really know where it's going, but you know that video is huge and you know that um, it's growing. It's a growing market for sure. Want to join IntelliFluence as an influencer for free? It's easy. Visit IntelliFluence.com, click on the Influencers link, and then click on the Join for Free button to sign up. Once you have registered, you will get immediate access to our influencer marketplace where you can browse relevant offers from brands and apply on the spot. 
You'll also be eligible to receive attractive product and service pitches from brands. There's absolutely no cost to join as an influencer, so we hope you take advantage of our service. Also, be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and well, you know the drill. Until our next episode, keep being awesome.